Excuse me. Can, can I help you? Oh, you heard I was going to do another cooking segment, Cooking with Comics, and you decided to show up early. Is that right? Because we're going to do some breakfast food, right? Well, you didn't have to come here this early. I mean, I haven't even started yet. Are you okay with waiting for a few minutes? Oh, and have you subscribed yet? Because we have a really good giveaway going on now. I don't want you to miss it. Did you just subscribe? Okay, just give me a minute. I'll be back. Okay, hit stop. Hello, my friends out there on YouTube land. It's your good buddy, Fantastic Phil here. And I want to welcome you back to my channel. So just as I said in the introduction, today is another episode of Cooking with Comics. Again, we're not cooking physically with comics, it's just a recipe based on comics. So we're not eating any paper. Hopefully it's not paper. Anyway, uh, today, for today's episode I should say, I've decided to make Peter Parker's favorite and uh, the impetus, I guess you could say, of many great Frank Show sketch covers. Funny, great. Uh, and that is Aunt May's Wheat Cakes. Everything that we need to make the wheat cakes, I've got right here. We've got whole wheat flour, buckwheat flour, baking soda. I've got some grass-fed grass butter here, molasses, salt, quick-acting baking powder, buttermilk, and two eggs. Before we get started, I want to point out a couple things. So you might be saying to yourself, what's the difference between whole wheat flour and traditional white flour that you get all the time from the supermarket? Besides the cost, of course, because whole wheat flour is a little bit more expensive. Whole wheat flour, for one, is more nutritious, and that's because it includes three parts of the whole grain. That's the bran, the endosperm, and the germ. Uh, whereas white flour typically is just the endosperm and is chemically bleached. So basically you're getting a more nutritious flour, and that is what leads into the cost. And Buckwheat flour, which is from buckwheat, it's not from your traditional wheats like this. Uh, it's more it's more absorbent than your traditional flour. It's used usually in Japanese soba noodles. Uh, it's a good source of magnesium and it has four times as much fiber as whole wheat flour. So, not your typical white flour. All right, well, let's go ahead and get started. Start by putting a cup of buckwheat flour into a bowl. Next, you're gonna sift a cup of whole wheat flour and add that to your buckwheat flour. Sifting is important so that you get all of the, the lumps out. Uh, after that you're going to add a teaspoon of the double acting baking powder. Then add a teaspoon of baking soda. Next add a teaspoon of salt and then put your mixture aside just for a moment. In a separate bowl get two cups of buttermilk and add to that two teaspoons of molasses. You can try to I don't know, make it look artsy, kind of like I did here, like a Starbucks coffee. Now, I've never actually tried molasses, at least not that I'm aware of. Um, so I figured, let me give it a little taste and see what it tastes like here. I got this little spoon. I don't know why we actually have these. I'll have to ask my wife about these, but these are very tiny spoons. And, uh, you know, granted, this is probably not the way to try it, considering I only put two teaspoons in for this entire mixture. But I figured, let me give it a shot here. Here we go. It, it's like a really thick and and really kind of sweet honey, but it's not, I don't know, you can tell it's not honey. I don't know the best way to describe it, but you saw it was so sweet, apparently it knocked out my, my left ear phone. So there you go. Come for the comics and I guess the cooking and stay for uh, taste testing. Back to the recipe. Okay, now mix up the molasses and the buttermilk. Then get a separate bowl and beat two egg yolks. That's right, the yellow stuff there. You're going to then take those egg yolks and add it to your, your buckwheat flour and your whole wheat flour mixture there. Just pour it right in. Now go ahead and add a quarter of your melted butter right to the mixture there. And after that, you're going to take your buttermilk molasses mix and pour it right into our mixture as well. Next, you need to take two egg whites and whip them until they're stiff. But here's a little word on that. The actual process for 
whipping egg whites uh, by hand at least seems like it's taking a little while. So while I'm doing that, we're gonna talk about the book of the video. Hey everybody, today's book of the video is Fantastic Four number 37. That's loyalty number 682. Whoop, almost flew away from me there. Uh, as you can see, this is a Halloween themed issue. I'll be honest with you, I had a lot of trouble picking a book of the video this time around. Uh, my LCS has been hit with a lot of delays from Marvel, uh, and my DC books are, are not what they were at this point. But I really wanted to highlight this. Now, I'm going to start this by saying, generally, I'm a very big fan of Dan Slott. He is one of my favorite writers. I'm glad that his run on Superior Spider-Man is finally getting some credit. Uh, if you haven't already, I, I encourage you to check out his uh, GLA run. Uh, his run on The Thing was great. I think that was actually my first exposure, at least that I know of, to Dan Slott. And his She-Hulk run was, uh, I think, near perfection. Uh, his Fantastic Four run, on the other hand, I'll be honest with you, has been a little uneven, at least for my liking. Uh, I found that his, uh, his strength in the series is when he has these kind of small, kind of more intimate moments where you see the Fantastic Four really interacting with one another versus these kind of big events or semi-events. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I didn't read the main story in Empire, the only, that, that was his bigger crossover, I think it's from last year at this point. The only parts of Empire I, re I read were the ones that kind of bled over into the books that I was already reading, but that was just a huge disappointment, in my mind at least. When I tried to read it digitally, I, I found myself just kind of being bored. I don't even think I got through the second issue, to be honest with you. That being said, one of the better things that came out of Empire, in my opinion, of course, were that uh, Thing and Alicia Masters, the uh, blind woman, she's puppet, uh, puppet master's daughter, uh, adopted two children. One is a Scree and one is a Skrull. And in this issue, they decide they're going to take their two children on their first Halloween. It's kind of their first big Earth tradition. And it's kind of funny to see how the two of them quickly figure out how to manipulate, I guess you could say, the people in their neighborhood. Uh, it is a little bit of a catch-up issue as well. They kind of update you with Human Torch's new condition following the uh, wedding of Dr. Doom. I mean, that stuff is okay. I, I don't really particularly like how it's unfolding, but it is what it is. Uh, if you do pick up this book, again, I'm highlighting it just because of that little interaction that they have with the children. It, it, I shouldn't say it's a little interaction. It is the main story in this particular issue. But uh, I thought it was inventive, again, how they kind of manipulated their neighbors uh, to get extra candy on Halloween. And uh, I really think he writes the son. I can't think of the son's name. I think they just call him Joe, uh, who is the Cree of the two. Uh, I really like the personality that they kind of put to the kid where he almost acts like a soldier. So he kind of refers to thing as commander and whatnot. I will say there's one thing I didn't like in this. Uh, without spoiling too much, at one point towards the end of the story, Alicia Masters has disappeared. And she is seen sculpting. It looks like she's sculpting a, a, her son. Uh, a, a statue of her son, rather. Now, as the daughter of Puppet Master, she kind of has the same abilities where she can make a a statue to control somebody, uh, just like Puppet Master does. And she's interrupted by Puppet Master, who controls one of her neighbors and stops her, or convinces her to stop. Uh, overall, I thought it was a little out of character for this character, uh, or out of how that character would normally act or think. Uh, I don't think it particularly added anything to the story. Uh, I guess it's more of a time will tell type of thing. But all in all, if you do pick up an issue of Fantastic Four, I think this is the one to do it. Again, that's Fantastic Four number 37, loyalty number 682. All right, let's go back up to the kitchen. Okay, so I abandoned my plan to use just a hand whisk to uh, to get the egg whites nice and stiff. Uh, I use the mixer, and I highly recommend it because it saved me a whole lot of time. Just, a, I guess, a pro tip I had to learn the hard way. For you. Once you're finished, your egg whites should be stiff but not dry. Then you're gonna take your egg whites and gently fold them into your mixture, but be careful not to over mix them. Uh, when you're done with uh, with all the mixing and whatnot, it should look something like this here. 
Doesn't look appetizing yet, but I promise you we're getting there. One thing you may not know about me is that I'm a pancake aficionado. We eat pancakes in my house every Sunday. Uh, I prefer birch benders myself. We used to use Kodiak cakes, but we stopped using them because the oats aren't organic, so we don't know if they're glyphosate free or not. Uh, but anyway, we have our own griddle just for pancakes. Don't get me wrong, it's not like something bad will happen if we use it for something else, like an army of darkness or something. Uh, it, it's just, this is what we use it for. So let's go ahead and get these puppies cooked. So now the directions say to cook these until we start getting little bubbles at the top. And then once we have that, we're gonna flip them. As you can see, I'm just starting to get bubbles. This is the first one I put on. So I'm just keeping an eye on everything and I'll, uh, I'll show you, of course, when I flip them. So my first batch is actually done. Uh, they're noticeably thicker than normal pancakes, and I, I can't even tell the batter has more weight to it. But uh, the thing I'm a little concerned with is that this seems to, this recipe seems to make actually a lot more pancakes than I typically make on a Sunday. So uh, if they're heavier, I feel like they're gonna be because they're denser. Hopefully we're able to either finish these or at least freeze these. But uh, stay tuned and we'll do a taste test next. Okay, so we're ready for the taste test. My wife, my beautiful wife is joining me. She doesn't want to be on camera. Uh, so you're just gonna see this for just a few moments. Now, honey, what was your first reaction when you saw them? They're thick and there's a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you, if you happen to be in North Jersey and you have a time machine, you can travel back to when we're filming this and come and have some, I guess, with us. But uh, she's ready to go ahead and do a taste test because she's hungry. You want to try it? Sure. You sound really thrilled. Yes. <laughs> you want your honey? Yeah. She likes her honey. That noise in the background is not anybody urinating. It's my coffee brewing. Okay, so first thought with honey. It's good. Almost tastes like cakes, like regular cakes instead of pancakes. That's because if you remember from Aunt May, they're wheat cakes, honey. That's good. So she likes it with honey. I'm gonna try mine dry first. Okay, so again, we're just trying mine dry. Yes, my coffee's still brewing. It's good, it's not as dense like I thought it was gonna be, I guess because of the egg white, but um, it definitely has a different flavor to it, like more of a bready flavor, I feel like. Let's try it with honey, my wife's favorite. Oop. I almost shut honey all across the table. Don't do that. Honey definitely adds to it. Mm -hmm. Really delicious on it. And last, we're going to try the recommended method, which is directly from Aunt May's recipe. Try with a little bit of uh, organic maple syrup. I usually don't use maple syrup, to be honest with you. I kind of have it just for cooking purposes. It's a good sweetener. Good sugar alternative, I guess you could say. And this is organic dark Vermont maple syrup from Trader Joe's, if you're interested in that. Phenomenal. Really, really great. All right, so my cup of coffee is finally ready. Uh, 
pairs perfectly with the wheat cakes. All in all, you think this is something you'd eat again, honey? Oh, definitely. Oh, good, because we have a lot more of the ingredients left. Overall, I'm really pleased with the outcome. I think it went really, really well, very delicious. Well, with that, go ahead and enjoy the rest of your day. Again, give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Comment, let me know what you think. Are there any recipes you want me to try out? I'm trying to expand a little bit into some DC recipes. They're a little bit harder to find, I've found at least. Uh, and as always, thanks again for watching this show. Peace, love, and comics. Take care.